Enter a chance to win a copy of Biomutant, your choice, PlayStation or Xbox. All you have to do to win is subscribe and leave a like and a comment on this video. Welcome to Biomutant, it's Abyss, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about some tips and tricks that I wish I knew earlier. Okay, so there's a lot I wanna talk about, so let's get right into it. All right, so first up, when you're at the mutate character screen, do not pay any attention to what your character is going to look like. Pay close attention to what the stats are that you're going to get. I know when you go all the way to the intellect, your character is going to look small with a big melon head. But when you go all the way up to strength, your character is just going to look like a big fat meat head. Don't pay any attention to that, right? Just pay close attention to the stats that you're going to get on the right. Later on, once you get into the game, there's a bio area that has a mutation spot in the underground area. It will cost one bio point and then you'll be able to change your character structure. It won't change the stats that you already picked in the very beginning, but you'll be able to change your character to wherever you want. So like if you want to have that big head, but you rather have that vitality and strength, then you can change it later on for one bio point. Or maybe you want your character to look like a big old meat head, but you want to have that intellect. You can go and can change it vice versa. Just remember, pay close attention to the stats that you want to start out with, and then later on you can change what the character is going to look like. Next up, invest some points into your agility. Early in the game, I didn't invest anything into my agility at all, and then I find some of these ultimate weapons that require you to have at least 50 agility or 60 agility. There are gonna be some challenges that are within the game that will increase your strength, health, and agility by 30 points for each one of them. So you don't need to invest a lot of points into your agility, but I do recommend that you invest some points into your agility. This way you can use some of these ultimate weapons that you're going to get later on in the game. Next up, how to quickly find this superb loot. So when you go to an area, the objective might tell you there's three or four superb loot, but you don't wanna sit there and interact with every single item that you run into. The best way to find the superb loot is look for an object that has a yellow or red glow around it. This way you can find the best loot in that area without having to interact with every single item. This is gonna save you a ton of time locating the superb loot, and then you can move on to the next area. Next, I'm gonna tell you how to find these secret loot vault. So you wanna start the side mission that's called the Old War Storage. On the map, you're gonna notice that there's 14 different areas that has a Hulk nest. When you go to that area, there's gonna be a mini boss that you're going to need to defeat. You probably won't be able to do this right away, so you might have to do this a little bit later in the game. But when you go to the area, you'll defeat the mini boss. That mini boss is gonna give you a key, then you can use the key on the vault. Inside the vault is gonna have some really, really good loot, plus some crafting materials to make some armor and weapons but there's 14 different locations that you can go to. Once you defeat the first mini boss, you'll unlock the side quest called the Old War Storage and you can start looking for the other vaults. Next up is how to craft a seven star weapon. Since you know how to locate the superb loot and you know where the locations are to those secret loot vaults, you should have a ton of materials on you just so you can craft yourself your own melee or ranged weapon. So go into the menu underneath craft. At the very top, you'll see melee or range. So just select one of the two. And then you want to select craft new. So the way this works is you want to select a base type. I'm just going to go with the rifle. And then at the very top, as you're selecting the parts, you'll notice that there's going to be some stars at the top. So I messed around with this a bit and I made myself a couple weapons. I made one weapon where I just put nothing but the ultimate rare items on it. And since I like to have the rifle, I had the critical chance up to 18%. The range is almost max. The rate of fire is going to be low because it's a rifle. But the accuracy was all the way up. Armor pierce was all the way up. And my damage was up to 500. This is just from, you know, finding the superb loot, the secret loot vaults. And there are a bunch of side quests that will give you some rare items. So yeah, mess around with this a little bit. And you can easily craft yourself a nice seven-star weapon unlock the trophy slash achievement and have a little fun with the game making yourself a nice crazy weapon. It will cost you some crafting materials, but those are very easy to find. Throughout the whole map, you're gonna find this tower of materials that you just need to walk up to and hit a couple times with your melee weapon. It's gonna give you anywhere between one to five items. They're found throughout the whole map, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. You're gonna be doing a lot of exploring, so just keep a lookout for those materials. All right, so the last thing about loot, uh, you're going to have some unique mounts that you're going to get from the story. One is like the mech that I'm showing you right now. They have their own unique way of searching for loot that you cannot do on your own. For example, with a mech, it will suck up the oil and then you can fish for some loot. So when you're in the dead zone, it's definitely worth taking a little bit extra time and try to look for some of this loot. 
And then later on, you're gonna get the Goo Glide, which will pull some trash away, and then you can fish for some loot too. These are a couple unique mounts that you're going to get in the game that will allow you to search for loot that you cannot get on your own. All right, so let's move on to combat. So you wanna parry the enemy's attack. You'll notice that there'll be a lightning icon that will come above the monster's head. That is when you wanna hit the L1 button just in time. This will parry the enemy's attack. It will also stun the monster and then you'll be able to do massive damage. With the smaller enemies, you can hit the L1 button after you parry their attack. You'll notice it'll launch the enemy up in the air and then you can continue to attack the enemy. Parrying the enemy's attack is extremely helpful because it will stun the enemy and do massive damage. So here's a little bit of gameplay. Next, let's talk about your Super Wong Fu. Now, in order to activate it, you're going to have to fill up three icons. Now, in order to get an icon filled up, you're going to have to hit an enemy with your special attack. Depending on what you're using a melee or ranged weapon, the input sequence is going to be different. So if you're using a ranged weapon, your input is going to be a little different in order to do a special attack. Keep in mind, you're going to have to unlock your special attack in order to use that move on a certain weapon. So it's not like it's unlocked for all weapons. So you've got to be a little picky on which weapons you want to have that unlocked on, especially the tribal weapons, because not all of them are going to be great. Now with the melee weapons, they're going to be different to the input sequence. So just keep that in mind, but see what you like using your special attacks better with your melee or your range. I prefer the range. I have a little bit of an easier time with that. Once you hit an enemy three times with your special attack, this will fill up your super and then you can activate it by hitting the L1 and R1 together. The two supers that I like to use is one is the turtle strike where you're just basically pressing the punch button and it'll just a barrage of punches and just keep hitting the enemy up in the air. Then there's the ground slam where you just press the jump button and then the punch button and it'll do a ground slam doing damage to all the nearby enemies. Those are the two that I like to use the most, but just remember you need to hit an enemy three times with a special attack in order to fill up the icons and then you can activate your super. Okay, next we're going to talk about the PSI shrines. So every time you interact with one, it's going to give you a PSI point. These are used to unlock your dark and light powers. You can get an easy 18 points by going to your tribal's outposts. There are six different tribes and each one of the tribes has three outposts. At the start of the outpost is where you're going to find the shrine. There is one set of outposts where the shrines are going to be in the middle. Just keep that in mind. If you don't see it in the beginning, just search for it in the middle. But you can get an easy 18 PSI points by going to each one of your tribal's outposts. Next, I want to talk about a mutation I want you to unlock as soon as possible. It is the third one on our list, which is the mushroom. It will cost you four bio points. Now, I don't use this against enemies. I use this in order to reach a higher spot. Now, in order to get bio points, you want to go into any one of the bio areas and fight the enemies that are within there. So get this one unlocked as soon as possible so that if you need to reach a higher location, you'll have an easier time doing it. Next, let's talk about the five resistance suits. So you're going to want to get these as soon as possible. When you go into the menu, you can preset five outfits, but the first one you're probably going to want to set up with your regular gear. And then the next four, you're going to want to put your resistance suits there. So if you ever go into one of those areas, you can quickly go into the menu and then switch your outfits around. Now, in order to get a resistance suit, you need to go to a satellite dish. You have to do the small little mini puzzle with the white and the yellow, just matching those up. Then you're going to have to tune the satellite. Once you tune the satellite, it's going to point you in the direction of where that suit's going to be at. Then you just need to go to the location and pick up the suit. Now I have an in-depth guide in the description below on the locations to all five of the suits. But right now I'm just going to show you on the map of where you need to go for that satellite. Once you get to the satellite, then you just got to tune it and then it'll point you to the suit. So here's the location to all five of the suits.
Next up is swapping your weapons. So you notice when you tab over to the right with the directional pad, you'll pull up your melee weapon. You can place eight of them as your favorite, and then when you go over to the left, it'll do your range weapon, and you can place eight of them as your favorite. If you wanna change those around, you need to go into your menu and then underneath gear, and then you select one of your hands, and then you can tab over to range or melee, and then you can select which ones you wanna have as your favorite. So when you press an R3, then you can place the weapon anywhere you want on the wheel. So this works the same way with the range weapon. You just gotta go into the menu and you wanna select your favorite ones you wanna have on that wheel. There's a lot of weapons in this game, so you're probably gonna be switching them around a lot. So you can do this in a menu, plus you can do this at an upgrade bench. Now speaking of upgrade benches, to quickly locate them, you just wanna look for the balloon. Now you will mostly find these in outposts and villages. All right, a couple more things. When you run into a resting spot, you can switch it from day to night or night to day. Next, you can reload your weapon faster when you reload it in a red. Don't let your ammo run out. Wait until it's in a red and then reload it. All right, so the last thing to note is the game does not tell you when there's a point of no return. So once you defeat all four of the world eaters, that's when you want to make a save just in case you want to go around and complete all the other side activities. The good news is the game does have a new game plus and everything will carry over. I think the only thing that didn't carry over are certain story related items. All right, there you have it. Those are the tips and tricks for Biomutant. If there's anything else you would like to add, then please leave them in the comments down below. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, support the channel, and I will see you next time.